Hi everyone, my name is Lucas and I'm going to talk to you today about a clinical case of limb ischemia. So the objectives for today are to understand the basic clinical anatomy and pathophysiology of peripheral arterial disease, the risk factors associated with peripheral arterial disease, and the investigations and management of it. So as always, the sort of basic anatomy, just to be aware of and, and go through. So you have your arterial system of the lower limb, starting with the common iliac artery branching from the abdominal aorta, which then splits into the internal and external, external iliac artery, which continues into the lower limb, becoming the superficial femoral artery, and off of which branches the deep femoral artery into the, the deeper structures of the, of the thigh. This artery then continues its course down the leg, uh, down the thigh, as the femoral artery becoming the popliteal artery behind the knee, which you can feel on, on your pulse. Um, continuing down and branching off into the anterior and posterior tibial artery and the dorsalis pedis artery. So, so peripheral arterial disease can happen across all these arteries um, in the body really, but particularly in the lower limb. Pathophysiology wise, um, there's a range of mechanisms, but primarily uh, the main mechanism is, is atherosclerosis. So buildup of uh, a plaque in, on the internal uh, wall of the arteries um, causes peripheral arterial disease. But there's also a few other mechanisms. So thrombus, um, thromboembolic events and inflammation can also cause peripheral arterial disease. So just some terminology to go through. Um, you may have heard of some of these and just to define what they sort of mean. So intermittent claudication or just claudication is pain during exercise, usually to the lower limb, or sort of the calf region commonly, and that's due to blood flow compromise. Another key term is critical limb ischemia. Now this is where there's advanced peripheral arterial disease and the blood is actually compromised uh, to the extremity. And this actually causes rest pain. Um, and you may have other features like gangrene, ulceration and wounds. Another term that we need to be aware of, um, particularly for sort of urgent care of, of, of lower limb ischemia, is acute limb ischemia. So this is a sudden loss of limb perfusion and uh, it's, it's, a, it's an emergency really. And it can have these features, so we talk about the six Ps, pain, paresthesia, pulselessness, pallor, paralysis and perishingly cold. So some of these are, are kind of late signs, sort of the paresthesia, pulselessness, things like that. And really the main feature is, is pain at rest. Um, and you want to just be aware of that with these patients. So you've got a history. Um, you're a GP in general practice, seeing one of your routine appointments for the day. He's a 58 year old gentleman. He's a plasterer by trade. He's got type 2 diabetes, which is insulin dependent, high blood pressure, familial hypercholesterolemia, and he smokes 20 a day. So he, he says to you he's not been able to walk as far recently due to a pain in his left calf. But he's currently pain free. So he gives you a bit more history. So previously he would walk uh, 200 meters and back to the local shop. But how do you want to approach this patient? So you want to do a full history and exam, bearing in mind you're in general practice. So you want to do the cardiovascular system and the peripheral arterial system. So on your examination, you see he's got uh, some lesions there on his eye, which are called xanthalasma, which are lipid deposits under the eye. If you see there, he's got some tar staining on his fingers, uh, just under the nails there. He's also got... Um, a non-healing ulcer on uh, the medial malleolus of his left foot, same uh, symptomatic foot. And some other findings you've got, his heart sounds uh, are found to be normal, his carotid pulses are present, no bruise, the rest of his pulses are all present, the dorsalis pedis pulses are present, but weaker on the left side. So what are you going to do? So at this point, your diagnosis 
uh, from this history should be intermittent claudication based on what we've just uh, spoken about. And you have to treat this conservatively, and this is really a big part of the, the general management of these of this condition. So you want to control risk factors. So he's diabetic, so you've got to make sure his blood glucose is in range, his HP1C, A1C is in range. He's a smoker, so stopping smoking is is paramount in this situation. And also his exercise is restricted with all these problems, so you can offer them a structured exercise program to improve that. And then medically, you want to start antiplatelet therapy, usually aspirin or clopidogrel. You want to do it, give him an antistatin, so usually 40 milligrams of a statin, torvastatin is a common one. And you can give uh, some symptom control medications or called naphtidofurol, oxalate and silostazole. And then common risk factors, uh, it's all the sort of cardiovascular risk, risk factors to be honest. So you've got your smoking, diabetes, blood pressure, lipids, el uh, older age, uh, cerebrovascular disease and being sedentary. So the patient goes home, you are happy with your, your management um, and he's happy as well. But he presents to A&E two months later uh, where you're working as a locum doctor. And he's now got severe left calf pain, which is not relieved by rest. And he's unable to walk. Um, he's got no history of any trauma to the leg. So what, should, what now is your current approach, approach to the patient? So made it a bit easier. We're in A&E. We've got a bit more to our fingertips. And what do you want to do? So have a think right now. So in terms of investigations, as usual, you want to do your bedside ones first. So you get a full set of OBS. Um, you can do an ABPI measurement, which I don't really have time to go into the scope of this for this talk, but it's called the Ankle Brachial Pressure Index. So it's a scale uh, and measurement to measure uh, peripheral arterial disease and the severity of it. You can do a handheld Doppler to assess the peripheral pulses to see if, the, um, if they're working or not, um, and an ECG. So looking for other causes and things for perhaps an embolic cause of limb ischemia. In terms of your bloods, you want to do your routine um, FBC, UNE, LFT, CLP, bone profile, uh, HbA1c for his diabetic control, and checking his lipid profile as well. This could have a surgical pathology, so you want to do a group and save in COAG for a workup for that, and you want to assess his lactate and blood, uh, blood gas. In terms of imaging, you do a CT angiogram, which is the gold standard for, for this, uh, for looking for limb ischemia. And you find on the report, there is occlusion of the left proximal posterior tibial artery. So how do you want to manage this patient? So any acutely unwell patient, you do an A2E assessment every single time. So that's, that's really important there. And also give pain relief. And essentially you want to do an urgent vascular referral because this acute event is an acute limb ischemia and that's going to be something that's managed with a vascular surgeon or at least vascular surgical input. And they may, would, may want to do um, a few of these options. So there's different techniques they can use. So angioplasty, which is uh, obviously opening up the vessel usually with a stent or um, with a balloon. Bypass grafting, so creating uh, creating a bypass with a PTFE graft or a, um, or a vein graft. Stents, as we said, open up the artery. Um, arthrectomy can be used, so it can, it can remove a blockage from the artery if it's a short enough blockage or if that's amenable to be, to be removed. And laser as well. So just to summarise what we've gone through, um, we've looked at the basic anatomy and pathophysiology of peripheral arterial disease. We've looked at some of the risk factors for peripheral arterial disease. And we've looked at the approach to management in both primary and secondary care and some various surgical techniques. Thank you very much.